Hello, Miss um, Pamela Joyner. Hi, this is my response to your discussion board post. So, um, yes, I feel like um, we all have um, to acknowledge our own self-awareness, as it says in Parsons and Dickinson. Um, please excuse the dog barking in the background. Um, I definitely spoke to that in my introduction post that that might happen sometimes and I have no control over it. Um, so I do apologize for the dog barking in the background. But to that end, um, speaking to your, um, your position on Christians living and working in an ethical manner, um, you mentioned in your post that you say a private prayer um, for your clients in session, as well as um, inviting them. Let me see. Let me just make sure that I'm reading it correctly. I'm going back to make sure I read it properly. Sorry. I definitely um, read first and then started to record, but I don't want to misspeak while I'm recording. So I'd rather take two seconds and reflect real quick. Okay. Um, in the case of the non-believer or the non-Christian, the experience is different. Um, in my case, I approach each client with a private prayer before the session, inviting the Holy Spirit, um, as a Christian, um, especially when um, I was in EMT, um, I always blessed my bus. You know what I'm saying? I blessed my partner without them knowing um, because we're working to do God's work. It's a ministry to help people, right? Right. Um, and you're speaking to that. You're speaking to, sorry, excuse me. Um, there's an added value to clients having a Christian helper. That's your wording. Um, but what if your client isn't a believer, right? Um, so I guess my question to you, um, my response to your di discussion board post is, um, do you pray with your clients at the beginning of the session? Um, and if that's not part, excuse me for being um, contradictory, right? Because, you know, some organizations don't um, have a space for that, um, like to acquiesce to the content of prayer in session um yeah like you have the board of trustees you have the code of ethics for the organization which is separate from the ACA and the um human service code of ethics you know what I'm saying like these are all separate entities although um working in collaboration, there is a, when it comes to that, there's like a hierarchy, right? Why? Because at the end of the day, the organization in and of itself is its own operating entity. So yeah, that was my question. Like, do you actually pray with your clients? Um, and if so, like, you almost got to do that on the hush. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, remember having a therapist once right and he he said to me you know this is off the record because I have licensure to maintain and I need you to know that um if this was to be communicated outside of our interaction that I could potentially you know what I'm saying like he could lose his status because he decided to speak to me plainly. Um, and he was a Christian, you know what I'm saying? But he worked for a government mandated agency. Um, yeah, so that in itself is 
an ethics issue. So um, I just wanted to pose that to you as um, I am responding to your discussion board post because I acknowledge that um, as Christian helpers, um, there is a space and a time for these things. However, um, it could be deemed, right? Right? It could be deemed unethical to perform in this manner um, for loss of position, loss of that week's salary, you know, um, ridicule by your peers. Like there are so many facets to the repercussions that could be imposed upon you. Um, but all that being said, right, because what the enemy would mean for your harm, God could pull that around. Um, not that he could, God pulls that around for the righteous, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, but, um, that was something that, that spoke to my spirit as, um, I was reading your discussion board post because in Parsons and Dickinson, that's also something that I spoke to, um, not, um, like counter transference, not, um, blend, uh, maintaining boundaries. Right. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that because you speak to the primary relationship of the helping practitioner is to cause no harm. Um, now if you're no longer there and God is working through you, you know, that choice to pray with someone could technically do harm because now you're not in a position to be available to that person anymore or to the other clients at that particular organization. So um, I guess my concluding thought is um, knowing thyself um, in Christ Jesus and knowing when to speak and knowing what not to speak. And I just pray that in your professional endeavors, that discernment is evident in the Holy Spirit's presence in your session, in your interaction with your colleagues, peers, supervisors, and the like. Um, because things can, can be misstrewed misconstrued and um you might find that as i have as a christian um because i come from a very diverse background and um me wanting to phrase a thing a certain way um in places that i come from it doesn't come out like something that people would want to hear if it said too preachy like too prayerful like like sometimes people need you to just you know um in hey, order mommy. to be heard so that having been said um have a blessed evening and ciao for now